Good morning friends. Today we are cutting up pig that Mac raised. This is not a how to video. This is simply a how we did it video. We have cut up pigs a couple times before, but not super technical. And we haven't done curing and smoking really. I've done a bit of dry cured bacon. So we're trying to up our game. We got a bit of a game plan. Um, Marius is heading to pick up the pig where it's been hanging at the slaughterhouse um, in their cooler. And I'm gonna show you what our game plan is. So I printed off of the internet this guide. I'll link the website that I got this from because there was more in that website as well as this picture because we already know how to butcher so to speak. We just want to know more what the technical parts are. And then from the website that we got this, um, this chart didn't want to print off well but I will link it for you. But it breaks down so like okay you've got the shoulder and here's the different cuts you can make with the shoulder. Here's this, and this is a helpful guide for us. We do this when we're butchering a cow as well, just because we're so used to whole muscle butchery with wild game, and we don't do a lot of technical cuts, but we want to know the technical cuts when we're doing something domestic that we raised. So I'm using the bacon recipe from the Prairie Homestead book, and um, this is like the traditional wet cure smoke. And then I'm doing the dry cured from Elliot Family Homestead, which I've done her dry cured bacon before, and it's really fun because then on that hook there, because this actually doesn't get much sunshine, it stays pretty cool in here, I hang the dry cured bacon in the kitchen. I'm also doing the ham from this book as well. So that's what I'm doing, and I'm going to get those started today. Mary's dad has a big barrel smoker that we're going to use. Um, we've got our meat grinder. You got mosquito bites there, Mac? Heck yeah. Cabela's carnivore, one horsepower, our very favorite. We used one from someone else for years and finally invested in one ourselves. This thing is really heavy, but dang, does it grind meat and grind meat fast. So I'm going to grind the fat so it's ready for rendering as well as some ground pork. Stop itching, you're making it worse. Marius also borrowed his dad's bone saw. Um, we mostly just use our kitchen knives for butchering. The only specialty one we have is Marius has this big one. It's also a Victorian Knox, which is my kitchen knife brand anyways, but it's this big old knife here. Um, he also sometimes uses this knife. Um, because it's really, it's got a lot of weight behind it. So for cutting apart big muscle groups or like cutting apart joints, he likes that one. And then the knife I'm using, I've always used one of my dad's, but this year. Oh, you've got your knife sharp and ready? Yep. So my job right now is to completely clear all the kitchen counters. Still a few odds and ends on the counters that need to move. And I gotta get our folding table. We put that right here in the middle of the kitchen. And then we shall get See. moving on this butchering. So the knife sharpener that I've been loving recently, it's so quick, is this Fiskars one that you can use for knives or axes. It's Max, he got it for Easter. Did you take the lid off? It's hard. Most Ones that are the pull-through style ham, you just worry about your things. Okay, so most pull-through style ones have like a little V that you pull the knife through and it scrapes the metal off. This one, let me do it this way here, is actually just these rolling blades. So, Matt, could you show, sharpen a knife for me on it and show me? I'll show for my own knife. Can you just do this thing? So, all our knives are Victoria Knox. Um, we, that one, and this one, we got his wedding presents nine years ago, still love them. Mary's just recently bought this one for butchering. And the nice thing about this sharpener is that kids can use it and get the right angle. It doesn't, can I show you the knife? Can I see the knife now? You're actually not getting the tip quite good enough there, but um, it doesn't, like there's no metal filaments or anything that scrapes off. It's literally just sharpening it with this little miniature stone. And it was maybe $15 and I love it so much. So we have got some organs here and the 
kidney fat, that's your leaf lard. And here is our half pig. Well, there's, the other half is in the basement. And the hanging weight on this one is 106. So that is a good hanging weight there, bud. Yeah. You did well. Wait, you said if Max okay. pigs did well, we could get me pigs. So a quick run down here. We'll cut the feet off. Some people eat the feet. Our dog gets the feet. This is the jowl that will get cut off, and this will get smoked like bacon. Um, your shoulder roast, picnic roast, bacon, ribs, loin, That's a huge and ham. ham. Can't wait. That's a big ham. Yeah, well, we cut it into a few. See, I don't think I can flip this one-handed. But there you go. Let's start cutting. Look, tell me if it looks right to you, Doug. I think that looks right. Okay, before I do that, I want to cut these first. The hawk or the shank? The kids are now grinding the fat. They already did the kidney fat and they're working on the back fat. Oh, here's a piece of kidney fat that we accidentally oh, It's fine. So, because I don't have anything else on the stove, I'm just immediately getting the fat rendering, might as well just get as much done while the kitchen is already greasy and messy. We've got the first half cut apart. We were kind of just still figuring things out and I'm gonna video for you on the second half here. I'm working on wrapping and trimming fat, for grinding, for curing. Followed this line straight through. Four cap. I got you to the over, you know? I know, I'm just running the weight off the package. Yeah. So, pass me packages. No, no, that's 3.11. 3. 3. And you want it to do the same? Just yeah. Stakes up there. So here we're cutting into three hams. This is a hawk here that's going to get cured and smoked. Hawks are so good for bacon and all that jazz. Sorry, beans and all that jazz. So we have three hams. Here's ham number one. So because everything's kind of a different size, which means different curing times, I'm going to try and organize everything between the bacon and the hams and the hops and all that sort of stuff into just two or three smoking sessions. So make sure that they kind of line up so that we're not having to fire up the smoker every day and then it's only two, maybe three times that we have to, just to make it a little easier on ourselves. Now that's a ham. Might trim off some of the fat on it.
Oh, we just missed. He cut right off the front here. This is your jowl that's gonna get smoked. Now we have the front hawk. I guess we can do that. Something we need to invest in is a good meat saw of our own. This is Mary's dad's and it's maybe seen better days. side has that. You can cut it off if you want. We don't worry about it. So off of the other one, you can do it. You can cut. We cut this front off and we're going to cure it kind of like a big meaty soup bone type thing. And then from there, we cut some shoulder sticks. You got that right again? Nailed it again. <laughs> so we're gonna try curing this as a little mini ham. You could really cure and smoke anything you want. And then from this, on the other one, we cut this all into shoulder steaks for either slow cooking or grilling or whatever. We love steaks off of a pig more than we like pork chops. Cut away, sir. You want steaks again? I want steaks again. this in my pile of things to deal with. What did we do four last time? Yeah, we did I'll two just do skinnier. three and see where we're at. Yeah, and one thicker. We actually don't do any pork chops because we don't love pork chops. They're not our favorite cut at all. So I'll show you where the pork chops are on here and show you what we're doing instead. I'm running out of space. <laughs> I'll give you another picture. It's hard to film and cut at the same time. But so the shoulder became these three shoulder steaks. Uh, some fat I trimmed off, and here's two roasts, which I haven't trimmed yet. I'm going to trim a bunch of the fat off, simply because then I can render it and make better use of it. I'll still leave like a finger's worth on there, but trim that skin off too so it can roast down nicer. Here's what he's got left on the table. So the order of business here is... Taking the skin off the bacon? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. We want the loin steaks. That's where the tenderloin is, right? We did. We did steaks there, yeah. So, I guess getting the bacon off would be the first step there. 
skin the damn thing. Yeah, I like those sticks. Cut up to there. Maybe Good. cut that section out cut first. This right now. I'm going to trim this fat again for rendering. Nice steak there. Some people leave a big old fat cap on their pork chops and steaks, but honestly, I feel like this chunk of fat is better served being put in um, rendering so we can have lard, and then I'll there, still leave a bit on for flavor, bone. but you know, I'd rather have the lard rendered. that beautiful marbling. You only get that from heritage breed pigs. What's your next mission here? Many would make pork chops, but for us, we do. We're taking it out as a big loin that is then going to become what all y'all Americans call Canadian bacon, but up here in Canada we call it back bacon because it's off the back. I think you can buy just pork loin too. Yes, I don't know. you can get pork loin. <clears throat> We've never bought pork before. <laughs> Lots of people buy pork loin. Oh, there you go. I don't know if I've ever... I bought bacon at the store and ham from the butcher, but I don't think I've ever just bought cuts of pork at the store. Our biggest goal with this pig is to smoke as many things as you can. We all love cured and smoked pork. 
meat in general. <laughs> By taking this loin off, it also gives us more ribs, which is always nice. Trying to wrap some meat back. Yeah, I think on my cow. I think on my cow. Yeah. Do you want to trim these pork chops, Mac? You could trim works. off the fat. What you're gonna do here, Mac? You're gonna take it to a different cutting board, and you're gonna leave just kind of like a finger width along the top, and cut off the rest of the fat cap for rendering. So take your chops to your to a chopping board. You can steal my chopping board over there. Nope, this is a, what we would call our back strap. So I just cut off the fat? Yep, just trim off. Leave a bit on. A bit is nice. Yeah. Is there a bone in there? Yeah. Lost to the shoulder. This isn't quite a park line yet. Had to take away the sound due to a copyright claim on the music playing in the background. So here, Marius is trimming this extra fat, as well as a bit of meat. This will get divided, the fat will get rendered, and the scraps of meat will get put in the grinding pot. This is making it so it's a more pleasant cut to deal with. Mac is trimming the fat cap off of these big old pork steaks. And here is the loin, all nicely trimmed for me to salt and cure. Good thing that the cow is not in milk yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she could have a calf right now. Well, no, she's got to wait another week or two until we have everything cured, and then she can have her calf. Oh, Murphy's Law, she's gonna have it all right now. <laughs> Some better go check, see if the cow's going. Okay, sir, what's your next step? Find the bacon. And go check and see if Mossy's cabin. Why would she be cabin? Because we're butchering a pig at the time we get one of the cats, which is probably a cat. So go check. So basically you're following the ribs here, right? Basically, yeah. So on this chop, Mac trimmed off a bit too much. So he's trimming off the meat so it can go in the grinding pile so it doesn't just get wasted and rendered off as cracklings. Can I start cutting meat? Um, That's pretty good. I gotta, we gotta trim the meat off of this. Can I start cutting meat? Can I start cutting meat? Um, why don't you cut up fat for you? But she doesn't have a knife. We'll get a knife. No, no, which knife I can. Can you? No. Look at that. Hey Matt, this is the face of your bacon. Bacon. You got it. You got to work. Um, okay, how big do you want? One. Two. Um, it's not right. Phase one. But that's okay. Phase two. One and a half. Phase three. Yeah, I think it needs to be cut in half that way. Oh, what about curing it? Hey, or smoking it? Hey, Matt. Okay. You don't. And cooking it. Matt! Water. Oh, yeah. Now how big? In half, in 
opinion, yeah. Or birth. So I think I did a video of the pork belly very well there, but. You did the what, what, and what? Okay. Now we're cutting up the ribs. So if you had bone in pork chops, they would be out of this section here. But we're just making it into sea bones and ribs. Mac, you don't have to, yeah. Okay, Freddy, you take another time. Do you need me to hold anything? Nope. I got a Not yet. This one's not bad. Here, let's see. Do you want to cut up more, Freddy? Here. Give her one without skin if possible. That one doesn't have any skin. Okay. Just one that in. Yeah. Honor and half her. Please. The skin's tough. And that's tough. Look at you. Looking at heart and bone and me. flesh with your bare hands. And that's tough. Easier to do than your hands. And that's tough. Babe, where do you want this? Well, there's bones. There's sweet bones in a pile there. Okay. My counter is getting contaminated. Not working for this. And I'd be able to do this in one slice. I know, it's hard. Okay, same thing or you want to? Yeah, same I'm thing. Make a shirt my knife, Narrower. Unless you want to do them. It doesn't matter to me. Well, I like... Cut there. I right. need to be careful with this razor. What are you thinking? Just that I like you to want keep long ribs, we can cut them this way. Tons of deep pieces do you want to do some long ribs? I don't care, it's up to you. I'm just tons of pieces. It's entirely up to you, it doesn't matter to me. I didn't even think about that. They can be fun too. Yep. Dinosaur ribs. When we got three racks of little one. So why don't you cut here, this one here, and cut these in half, but leave these long because these are getting into obnoxious long. Okay, cut here you say? Yeah. Because that's kind of the end of the really meaty part. Already. Hmm? Cut those in half, but then we'll leave these like dino ribs. Am I done? When you're done, that part is going to throw the pieces into the pot. I'm almost done. There I am going. I'm going. I'm going for it. Okay, how big do you want? Um, one, two, three? Two, yeah. So like here. Sounds good. Okay, put all that meat in the pile. Pork ribs are the only ribs on an animal that we keep as ribs. Everything else, we just strip the meat off from between the ribs because it's so chewy. It's just not worth it. Pork is the only one that really becomes something nice in our opinion. Ta-da! Pretty good! Yeah. <coughs> uh, is the uh, pig chopped up? Your job's done, now my job starts. Cool, I'm going fishing. <laughs> <laughs> good luck. So, in our house, Marius handles cutting apart the carcass into chunks, and then I handle the rest, which means that... You're way behind. I'm way behind because I've been videoing. So I got a pile there that all needs to be <laughs> salted and sugared for either bacon or ham or smoked miscellaneous things. That pot is also full of hams and such. Wrapping, grinding to render, grinding trim, some soup bones. What's that, Mac? Us kids. Us kids help in between. Oh yes, you help me so much. We gr we put the stuff in the grinder. I've been chopping this stuff up. Ray's been chopping that stuff up. We help wrap and label. You sure do. Do you want to get grinding the rest of the fat so we can move on to grinding meat? Okay. Thank you. Mommy, all the deep pieces are me. All the pieces are me. Oh.
so I left you guys hanging there for a while because I honestly didn't really know what I was doing either. Our plan for the ham didn't end up working because that was for a ham without skin and we really wanted to leave the skin on. So then we were looking into recipes and it didn't work. Um, we ended up getting a curing salt from the local sausage factory and they suggested that we inject a brine and since we have needles in our vet kit and big syringes, I just finished injecting all the hams and it was a really tedious process and it better be the best ham of my life. But I'll show you what everything looks like right now. So the hams and hocks are all injected and they're about to go into a cooler with ice packs into our root cellar, which is only about 10 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And they're gonna sit there for a few days till we smoke them. One of the other reasons why I decided to inject is because then everything is on the same timeline and it's not a matter of like, oh, this needs five days and this needs eight days and this needs 10 days. They're all on the same timeline and they can be used within a few days. The loins, I rub down with a salt sugar mix. They're gonna sit in the fridge same amount of time as the bacon, so five, seven days, and then they'll get smoked alongside the bacon. There's salt and sugar everywhere when you walk on this floor. Oh, Mary's is making dinner, leftovers. What are we having? What are we having? We're having ham, because we ate ham last night. We're having floor ham. Floor ham, there we go. Pretty much the same as what we had for breakfast, except for we had potatoes and eggs for breakfast now, potatoes and ham. The baby is really not in a good mood because we has been so busy all day. Do you have a book? It's a nice book. Yeah, I'll make a super quick look. Um, my lard, I got four quarts of leaf lard, which is the kidney fat, which is your pastry fat and then five and a half of back fat. I still have, okay, this pick it. I normally just put the fat in my root cellar, but since the root cellar is a little warm right now and I still have a good bit of fat left from when I rendered in January because I had been avoiding rendering all sorts of things. And then I rendered a whole lot of things in one day in January. So I'm going to cool this. Ooh, wow, that was loud, that hurt my ears. I'm gonna put them in the freezer because I'm not gonna be getting to these ones for months. Okay, you're wiggly, you're up, you're down, you're all over the place. Yes, back in the fridge. Oh, baby. So, I'm gonna freeze these since I'm not gonna be using them for months. Are we done videoing now, Rowan? I will let you know how the smoking goes when it gets done. So here's the thing. Our smoker borrowing plans fell through and Marius had to last minute build a smoker real quick. It was really stressful. Everything turned out really amazing, but I was just not in the mind space to video it and I hope next time to video that more in depth and show you how awesome it turned out. Oh, bye bye. Bye bye. Nice waving. Bye bye. Bye bye.